Welcome to a Business Growth Mindset Podcast. I'm Christian Lavalsi, and I am super excited to share this episode with you. To all the business owners and entrepreneurs, the crazy ones, the believers, the doers, the clever makers, the action takers, and everybody else in between, this podcast is designed for you. Last week, we had a super podcast on the nature of leadership, and I must admit, I was surprised by the many messages I received, thanking me for sharing this topic and focusing on organizational culture and the need to understand the difference between management and leadership. So reflecting on the feedback, I realized that we needed to take it up a notch and focus on leadership empowerment. So today, I'm going to share with you how to build a proactive team of empowered people. I'm going to take you through three stages that I have used in my own companies and in those of my clients. So you can use them in your business or in leading your team and your relationships. So stay tuned and listen up because if you have a team of one or more or many, this will apply to you and I'm confident that you will enjoy this episode. By the way, if you haven't already done so, uh, Grab a copy of my Amazon bestseller, An Introduction to a Business Growth Mindset, available on Amazon in Kindle and hard copy. So without further ado, let's go. In exactly the same way as when you are creating or changing the culture of your business, the empowerment uh, of your team must start at the top. It must also be driven from the bottom. If these two forces are not working together, then change will not be implemented. So how do you drive things from the bottom? Well, you empower your people. And how do you empower your people? By becoming an empowered leader. In this context, we are not defining empowerment as giving people power. You do not need to give people something they already have. We are defining empowerment as helping them to identify and release their power. Empowerment has a sense of ownership at its core. In the first instance, this ownership applies to you as a leader, which means it has to start with your belief system. If you consider the four main types of leadership styles that we discussed last week, then you can see how leadership style impacts on your ability to empower. For example, the autocratic leader is unlikely to empower anybody because the autocratic leader is the only decision maker within the organization. The democratic leader, however, has balance. The ability to delegate and distribute responsibilities lies at the heart of empowering leadership. If you are a control freak, then it is not in your nature to trust enough to give another people responsibility. All of which comes back to two things. The first is what you need to do. This is rooted in the importance of being able to move through the different leadership styles, choosing the one that best suits your needs and the needs of your organization at any given time. The second is how you do it. This is rooted in having a culture of failure. We can see how this works on a national level by looking at the recent changes to Israel's bankruptcy laws. In Israel, the emphasis has shifted from punishing those who are facing financial difficulty to supporting them until they are back on their feet. Part of Israel's amazing startup culture is founded on the view that failure is helpful, maybe even necessary, building blocks to success. Israel's recent changes around bankruptcy have moved things even further forward. They want you to try and by holding you up, When you try and fail, rather than punishing you further down, they've been able to build on their reputation as the startup nation to become regarded as the scale-up nation, effectively. Through the celebration of failure, you dispense with fear, and empowerment will naturally follow. In order to succeed, the, the need to control everything must be replaced with a desire to empower others in the knowledge that failure can be a part of success. Even when you know that you can outperform everyone in your team, 
you have to let go. The truth is that you cannot scale if you don't let go. Empowering others enables growth and prevents stagnation. So once you've empowered yourself, how do you then empower your team? Through including them, educating them, and spending quality time with them. There are three distinct stages that you can employ when working to empower your team. The first is sharing information with your team. The second is creating autonomy through setting boundaries. And the final stage is replacing hierarchies with self-directed teams. The first stage to empowerment is to share information with everyone in your team. It's as simple as that. If you don't share information, then how is anybody going to feel that they have any power? If you tell somebody to do something without explaining why they need to do it, then you deny them understanding and understanding the purpose of what they are doing. Without information, people cannot act responsibly. People with information are compelled to act responsibly. Every leader wants responsible, trustworthy people on their team. How do you go about developing these qualities? By exhibiting those qualities yourself through sharing information. The hot button here is trusting people. In order to share information, you must trust people with that information. You have to know that sometimes people will not prove to be worthy of that trust and will take advantage of the information you share to serve their own needs. Even so, you can't live in fear of this happening. If you want to progress, if you want to be entrepreneurial, if you want to live with purpose and passion, then you have to be open. The critical thing is to let people know and understand the current situation of your business. At the same time as letting them know where you are, you need to be able to let them know your vision for what that business is and paint them a vivid picture of where you want your business to go. Let them know that you want them to be part of that plan and ask for their input on how you can best grow the business together. This last point is the key. Above all, you want your team to share their ideas and suggestions on how they can help and what they can do to make it happen. This is where they become truly empowered. However, even if they don't have any suggestions or solutions for that matter, you must still involve them. Just because they take more of a back seat, it doesn't mean that they don't appreciate you sharing with them. Sometimes people are just happy and comfortable to get on with things without feeling they need to add to the vision. But they will still feel valued by you when you're included in that vision. Through all of this, you show that you trust your team and that you can be trusted too. With this in mind, let's focus on stage two, which is creating autonomy through setting boundaries. In order to become empowered, people have to learn new ways of thinking and of working with one another. This means that you have to set boundaries. Many people try to create change without setting any boundaries and then wonder why the changes don't work. All societies have rules. By the same token, within your organization, you need to have rules that provide direction and drive. By setting clear boundaries and creating autonomy, you dispense the need to have endless lead up presentations before you initiate change. You can deploy much faster. So how do you set these boundaries? Well, by defining each of the following. Purpose, what business are you in and why? Values, what are your operational values? Two, uh, three, image, what picture do you have of your future? Goals, what are they? And when, when and how will you achieve them? And, and roles and who does what and who is responsible for what? Structure and systems. How do you support what you want to do? Now, by defining each of these aspects, then you not only develop a clear understanding of what everything means from your perspective, but you can also begin to see what things mean from the perspective of each member of your team. A great thing to do to deepen that understanding even further is to sit down with each member of the team 
and ask them to list 10 things that they are accountable for within your organization. It is extremely revealing. Firstly, because most people struggle to find 10 things that they are accountable for. In fact, some people struggle to find one. Secondly, because there is often a significant difference between what they think they're supposed to be doing and what you or management think they are supposed to be doing. The reason this is such an empowering exercise is that vision is not brought to life by people's understanding of it. Vision is truly comes alive when people see that their contribution makes a difference. Once you've established the team's vision, you need to strengthen their commitment to the values. This generates unity within the team, makes people feel important and creates a sense of privilege. You do this by looking at how the organizational values tie to each individual's job description. This develops a deep sense of involvement and clarifies the values in the eyes of each team member. They see the ways in which what they do matters on both a personal and an organizational level. The thinking then becomes, why would I work for anyone else? You need to ensure that you are constantly reaffirming your values with your team. Have those sprint meetings once a week. Values should be a constant discussion. Once you have started having those conversations, then your eyes will be opened up to a huge number of opportunities. When people know where you're going and why, then they can start to contribute. And when they're contributing, they're engaged. You create alignment and unison. Early in my career, I was taught that the aim was to reach a destination, but that is not the case. It's a journey. I was always taught to cut the pie and get the biggest piece of the pie. That was the destination. To be a better leader, your motivation is not to cut up the pie. It is to grow the pie. I recently heard uh, Richard Turner, the founder of Zen Energy speaking, and I believe that he has made some incredible moves. Although he's no longer an owner or 100% of his company, his company is now exponentially bigger. The pie has grown. Uh, This comes back to leadership and vision. Now, that vision has led him to become the entrepreneur in resident uh, and industry professor at the University of South Australia. Um, If his destination had been to reach a certain point, he would have stopped once he reached that point. Instead, he has recognized that it's all about the journey and that is why he's been able to keep pushing forward, growing and developing. If you're struggling in your business or you work in a business that struggles with articulating vision, purpose, and goals, you're not alone. I work with many companies to articulate these areas with them so that they can empower their people, uh, grow their business, and build a rich and sustainable culture that flourishes. So we've covered the first two stages, so it's time to focus on the final stage, and that is replacing hierarchies with self-directed teams. This is where decision-making becomes the responsibility of the team or even the individual team members. It is possible for this to happen when each team and the individuals within that team become the problem solvers. Building self-directed teams is critical to great leadership. As a leader, you want to create more time for yourself in order to free your time, other people within your organization must be able to solve problems. By empowering individuals and teams to make decisions responsibly, they will have the confidence and the ability to solve problems and become self-directed. This is a critical element of the boss that I developed over more than 20 years of starting, running and developing businesses. The boss is my very own business operating system and it's fundamental to successful growth because it makes your teams accountable, drives innovation through self-directed teams and increases your time as a leader. The first thing you need to do is to set the level of responsibility so that they have the freedom to make decisions within those parameters. One point that needs to be emphasized extremely clearly throughout the process is that you are not telling them how to do their job. 
You are guiding them on how to manage their roles so that they can solve the problems that they would otherwise bring to you. But this stage, by this stage, they already know your purpose and values and your desired outcomes, as well as your vision. You've already created autonomy through setting boundaries. Empowerment comes from teaching others the things that they can do to become less dependent on you. They do need to be accountable for their areas of responsibility. And as such, they may feel more comfortable if they are able to come to you for validation. If they have identified a problem and come up with a solution, it can be helpful to all the relationships for them to check that you're happy with the solution itself. It reassures you as a leader and builds the confidence of the individuals and the team when everyone knows what good decisions are being made. To have people come to you with solutions is entirely different than having people come to you with problems. <laughs> it is an inherently important part of creating a rich culture. You are building independence. There is a saying I picked up while consulting in the UAE many, many years ago. Don't just do something, stand there. I was taken back by this at first, but I quickly learned that as a leader, this meant that you have to learn when not to step in so that someone else can act. It may require making a conscious effort not to act, but it is essential that you extend this trust to your people. Empowering leadership is not primarily about empowering yourself. It is about empowering others. It is through this empowerment of others that you as a leader strengthen your power. It's very hard to give up control when you're really, really good at what you do. Of all the qualities that a leader needs to process, empowering others is, in my view, the very most important. The fear of relinquishing control is often at the foundation of the mistakes that leaders make. Rather than protecting yourself by retaining control, you ultimately put yourself in a weaker position for the simple reason that empowered teams can do more than empowered individuals. By following the three stages to build proactive teams of empowered people, you harness the power of many. These ideas are not new. The principle of the mastermind goes back to 1928 when Napoleon Hill wrote The Law of Success, in which he states the group helps to organize useful knowledge, creating a virtual encyclopedia from which each member can draw information. This is why I'm launching my second mastermind program, so that more business leaders can empower each other and then take their understanding and knowledge back to their teams and in turn, empower the people within their organizations. I'll have my team post a link to the registration for anyone who is interested to be part of this group. Each step to creating self-directed teams is so important because people don't start out knowing how to work in self-directed teams. They need to be taught. It's important to realize this. It is also important to realize that there may be times when people are not comfortable with the change that you are instigating. Dissatisfaction is a natural part of this process. Your people may not want to make decisions because when they make decisions, then they are accountable. You need to recognize this and persist, but you also need to recognize when someone can't be empowered. Some people simply do not have the leadership qualities necessary to step up. Regardless of this, everyone has to be trained in team skills. Everyone. People's skills need to be developed because this is how great conversations are created. You need to find the ways that you can reach different groups of people so that you can connect with them in a way that has relevance and meaning in their lives and their roles. In order to make it work, Commitment and support have to come from the top. They have to come from you. You can't just show them the system and then tell them to get on with it. You have to get involved. It is an investment of your time and energy because once you have empowered your teams and helped them reach the stage where they are self-directed, 
your workload will have shifted dramatically and you can focus on leading your organization rather than micromanaging teams. Finally, teams with information and skills can replace the old hierarchy. Essentially, it's succession planning. The biggest problem that we see in Australia right now is succession planning because leaders don't empower their people and many businesses are mature with no future plan. Just as you don't need to control every aspect of your business because you believe you are capable, or say you're more capable than anyone else, you also don't need to view others as a threat to your position. It's okay for people to grow beyond your teachings. It's okay for people to grow beyond your ability. In fact, it's desirable. By enabling growth, you're giving your business the greatest guarantee of continuing success. And that is truly powerful. If you are in business or a C-suite executive struggling to take control, you lack freedom and you have no time, then it's likely that you are not empowering your team and that you are carrying the weight of your organization on your shoulders. It doesn't have to be like this. Start by following the three stages in today's podcast. Begin by sharing information, creating autonomy through setting boundaries and replacing hierarchies with self-directed teams. If you don't want to do it alone, get in touch with my team and let's see if I can help you. Thank you for taking the time to hang out with me today. I hope that I have provided you with really good value and insight on how to build a proactive team of empowered people through leadership empowerment. Until next week, I'm Christian Lavalsi and live with purpose. Are you ready to start taking action on your business? Would you like to spend more time with your family? Then call 1300 643 229 and start building momentum right now. I know you're busy. In fact, you are so busy that you don't have time to work on your business or yourself. Often tossing and turning at night, worrying about the how to's and the cash flow. How on earth can you possibly get? off the hamster wheel so that you can take a helicopter view to see where you'll be in 90 days, one year, or three years from now. In this program, I will take you from sleepless nights to blissful sleep. You'll have more time with your family and you will have the clarity and direction so you can grow and flourish. Call 1300 643 229 now and start building momentum.